Hey y'all, welcome back to Rico's Garage. In today's video, we're going to follow up the video I did previously concerning wiring up all the circuits on your 12 valve Cummins. In case you missed that video or you haven't seen it, I'll throw a link up here so you can catch up. Now in that video, I outlined wiring up the grid heaters, the voltage regulator, the fuel shutoff solenoid, and both of the electric cooling fans. And got a pretty decent response to that. There was, however, a minor oversight on the cooling fans. And I'll get into that here in a minute. I totally overlooked this until a few of you viewers had noticed this and questioned me about it. Enough that I felt pertinent that we do a follow-up video and change our diagram. So, let's spin the camera around, go back over to our third grade artwork on the dry erase board. I'll show you the way I presented it and then fix it and show you the way these fans are actually wired up in this truck. Again, my apologies to the small oversight, but let's correct it right now. As you can see, everything is still here drawn out on the board from the last video. Let's focus on the cooling fans this time around. Fan 1, Fan 2, fed by these two fuses, two relays, and I showed the relays going to a chassis ground. If you were to wire your fans up like this, they would run constantly. As soon as you put ignition power to the fuse box, it closed the relays, you'd have fans. Not a huge deal, but not exactly ideal. Um, the Cummins is a fairly efficient engine. It doesn't run hot per se. I mean, if you crank them up, then yeah, they will, but we're not going to get into that right now. They're fairly efficient. They don't waste a lot of horsepower and energy on heat. So if you were to do this in the wintertime, you would probably get no heat out of it. In fact, even in the summertime, you'd probably still be fighting to have the engine warm enough. So give me a couple minutes here. I'm going to fix this and show you how it's actually wired on this truck. We brought the third grader back in, fixed the artwork to show you how it's actually wired up. You can see the two relays, the grounds, tie together and come down. I got it shown as a ground symbol. But it's actually going to a B cool switch that goes on at 185 degrees and off at 165. I'll put a link in the description for this switch. I actually had it left over from another project, but you can purchase this switch separate and I'll throw you a link in here. So, what that does, until this switch closes, these fans aren't grounded, so they do not come on with ignition. Once they reach 185, the switch closes, which grounds out the relays, fans come on. Once it cools it down to 165, fans go back off. Cycle as needed. So there you have it. That is how the cooling fans are actually wired up. No, they are not on all the time. They do cycle. Like I showed you the switch, on at 185, off at 165. Reason I use that switch, I already had it. Had it left over from another project. Figured got it, might as well use it. Be cool does make another switch that comes on at 210 and off at 190. Uh, so if running into issues where this thing is just not getting warm enough, we can always switch to that. Um, I don't drive this truck with the snow and ice and the salt, but I did drive it to work a couple mornings where it's fairly cool. This thing does get good hot heat out of it. So for now we're going to run it and see how it goes. That's it. Hopefully that clears up the confusion a few of you have with the electric fans. That's how I did it. Not saying it's the only way, but that's the way I did it and you asked, so here it is. So be sure to like the video if it helped you out. Drop a comment down below if you have something to add. Subscribe if you want to see more of this build or any of the other builds we got going on in the shop. I know I've lacked a little bit over the past couple weeks, but it's been freaking cold here in Indiana and I just ain't felt like coming out here and messing with it. So now that the weather's going to warm up, we'll get back onto it. The YJ's right over here in front of me, getting its uh, drivetrain fixed. We'll probably video that. The square body is parked next to it, doing some odds and ends on it. And I promise you, once this crap gets off the roads and everything, we're going to go for a drive. And I'm going to bring you along. And when you subscribe, make sure you ring that notification bell so YouTube will actually tell you when I post a video and you can watch it. So now that we got all that covered, get off the computer, get out there in your shop, and get to working on something. And I'll catch you later.